Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Sturman. And I'm Melissa Salik burke with New America. Here are the headlines you need to know. On Friday, the Democratic-controlled House of Representatives changed its rules to allow for congressional representatives to remotely vote on legislation and passed the Democrats' $3 trillion stimulus bill. The stimulus bill passed 208 to 199, with 14 Democrats crossing party lines to oppose it. Republicans have made clear that it will not pass the Senate. Meanwhile, the rules change allows congressional representatives to temporarily vote remotely by providing exact written instruction to a member who will act as their proxy. The rule change will last for 45 days, at which point it could be extended if the public health situation merits it. 43% of COVID-19 deaths in Florida are in nursing homes, 40% in California, and almost one-third in Washington, D.C. New reports out of Florida, California, and D.C. area show significant increases in coronavirus deaths in nursing homes. In Florida, the percentage of deaths tied to care centers has been steadily increasing over the past several weeks, writes the Tampa Bay Times. Further, quote, at least 43% of deaths statewide can be attributed to long-term care facilities, unquote. The large majority, 83%, of people who died from the virus were over 65 years old. California's Department of Public Health released data showing that 1,058 skilled nursing facility residents died in California just this past week. And across the state, 40% of COVID-19 deaths have been in nursing homes. According to reports by the Washington Post, deaths in skilled nursing facilities account for almost one-third of Washington, D.C.'s COVID-19 deaths, 119 of 368 cases. At least 651 have tested positive for the coronavirus in D.C. skilled nursing facilities. Also, New York has lost at least 2,800 nursing home residents to the coronavirus. Life Care Centers for America is one of the largest nursing home chains in the United States. According to the Washington Post, several facilities didn't follow basic protocols such as washing hands, sanitizing equipment, or enforcing social distancing. At least 2,000 cases and 250 deaths have occurred in life care nursing homes, and five of their centers have each had at least 100 coronavirus cases. An earlier Washington Post analysis showed that one out of every four nursing home facilities in the United States have reported at least one coronavirus case. Nigeria's second largest city of Kano is experiencing an outbreak of coronavirus, with dozens of doctors infected, and gravediggers overwhelmed with work. Kano, population 5 million, has officially reported 753 infections and 33 deaths, but those numbers do not come close to reflecting the reality on the ground, according to residents and healthcare workers, as reported in the New York Times. Other hotspots are emerging across Africa. Burials in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, have tripled, in Tanzania, cases spiked, and the U.S. Embassy issued a health alert on May 13. But then the Tanzanian government abruptly stopped releasing its health data. Post-traumatic stress disorder threatens frontline medical workers and first responders. The New York Times reports that health experts across the United States believe that frontline health care workers and emergency responders are, quote, more susceptible to post-traumatic stress, unquote, every day. Instances of medical workers' death by suicide were reported several times over the last month, and countries worldwide have noted medical workers, quote, soaring rates of anxiety, depression, and insomnia, unquote. The World Health Organization released a report on the need for mental health action last week, highlighting healthcare workers and first responders' exposure to numerous stressors. Chairman of Patterson, New Jersey's St. Joseph's Health Emergency Department, Dr. Mark Rosenberg, said of the added stress from the coronavirus, quote, As the pandemic intensity seems to fade, so does the adrenaline. What's left are the emotions of dealing with the trauma and stress of the many patients we cared for, unquote. Adding, quote, There is a wave of depression, letdown, true PTSD, and a feeling of not caring anymore that is coming, unquote. What is so troubling about the pandemic is that there is no clear end in sight, so anxiety continues to build, says psychologist Karen Alter-Reed. Various initiatives have popped up across the United States to help frontline workers with free therapy sessions, but there has not been much expressed demand. Paramedic fighter fighter Kurt Becker believes the quote-unquote warrior culture image of emergency workers is what prevents them from asking for help. On Friday, the Washington Post reported that tensions were growing between the White House and the CDC. One official commented, quote, the CDC is not fulfilling requests, they're not collaborating, and they're disorganized. 
You're not speaking with one voice, unquote. A senior administration official commented that CDC Director Robert Redfield, quote, just had no power over his agency. He has no loyal politicals. He is a man on an island, unquote. The tension comes as Trump has been skeptical of scientific advice and as he has clashed with public health experts over whether projected death tolls for the virus are inflated. On Sunday, the tensions continued when White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro commented on NBC's Meet the Press, quote, Early on in this crisis, the CDC, which really had the most trusted brand around the world in this space, really let the country down with the testing, unquote. When asked if the White House maintained confidence in the CDC, Navarro punted, commenting, You should ask the president that question, not me. The World Health Organization's decision-making body is holding a virtual meeting on Monday with all 194 member states in attendance. A key question expected to come up is whether the U.S. and other countries will call on the WHO to investigate China's response to the coronavirus outbreak. President Trump has publicly accused Chinese authorities of allowing the virus to spread worldwide by withholding vital information after it first emerged in Wuhan in December. Recently, European and Australian officials have also called for an investigation. China has floated its own theories about the origin of the virus and repeatedly defected blame. Most recently, the Chinese Communist Party said in one of its leading journals that the virus could have come from anywhere, and Monday morning, China's foreign ministry said it was premature to launch an investigation. Chinese President Xi Jinping will address the assembly on Monday. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. And tune in next Monday for our next episode.